Hello and welcome to this Fusion 360 tutorial. Today we're going to look at the pattern feature within Fusion 360. So as you can see on screen there are four main activities or challenges which are either going to introduce or develop your existing knowledge in regards to the pattern feature. If you require any of the files, the completed models or any documentation associated with these activities please find them in the description below. So let's jump into Fusion and have a go. So the first challenge we've got on screen and what we're going to look at is how to use the rectangle pattern. So you get this option up here or if you go down to pattern you can use it here or select it here as well. And what we're going to do is I want to fill this surface okay with this cube so I want to create a lot of these cubes okay in a nice sort of a linear pattern so rather than going to sketch and drawing out okay 20 30 40 okay squares dimensioning all them and then extruding it which would take quite a long time we're going to use this feature instead so we're going to go up to type and select what we want pattern so in this case i want to pattern this particular feature down here which is this extrude so i'm going to select that it's then asking me what direction. So I can use planes to set this, okay, or these axis, or I'm going to use this edge here. And then I'm going to drag this arrow out. And you can see what's happening at the moment is I'm dragging this out and it's telling me, okay, the, the dimension between each of these, which is which is 40 millimeters, and I've got three. Now if I could click this here, four is appearing under here, and five will probably go off the screen. Okay. What I could do is change this, okay, and instead have it to extent. And then when I click on the plus, okay, that is including so six within the 80 millimeters. So extent, okay, and spacing is quite different. So you need to experiment with that. So spacing, okay, and extent. So we're going to choose extent. So between 80 or say 85 millimeters okay we're going to go for say 10. there you go so you can see we've got 10 of those down there now what we might want to do is pattern those along this way as well so this is why this arrow's here so we can drag that and again you can see what's happening here so what we're going to do this time is we're going to go for okay say a quantity of say five but we're going to change this here to say 35. And very quickly, as you can see from the top view, I've created this pattern here. And I can click OK. And I've got this pattern. Now, what you've got to understand is that all these ones that I've created after that one are children, basically. So they will follow the adult. So if I change the adult there, or the parent, and I decide actually I want that to be 15 millimeters in height. Okay, all the other ones will change because they are children of that parent. So it's very important to sort of understand okay that technique. So if I go back to that again, it's going to pattern that on there. Okay, also within this pattern, if I edit this, as well as um, selecting the features or bodies, okay. We've also got something called suppress. So suppress allows us, if that is ticked, to suppress or remove some of these. So for example, I could remove those middle ones if I wanted to add a particular feature there and click OK, like so. So as you can see, I've got a range of these patterns now around there. If I right click on it, I can always turn those back on. And because I've got a lot of these, it is giving me a warning saying too many patterns, consider using optimize or identical. So I could go into here as well. And it will result in the same thing. That, however, okay, it's removing uh, that sort of area that I have there. So you, it does tell you sometimes to choose some of these options here, especially if you've got a lot. Okay. Now, what we're doing here is we're dimensioning space and in one direction. If I click symmetric, OK, that is going symmetrical on that side and this side OK, of the original parent. So as you can see there, so I'm now spacing on both sides of that original. 
okay so you could do that for example if that cube was say in the middle you can then okay create copies either side so you, again you do have options there but i'm going to go okay that single sort of direction and then if i click on okay all right actually just before that so I, I, I showed you symmetric that way if you do symmetric again this way okay it's doing two either side okay in that direction okay and they've got of course if i did it like that and it's getting obviously a bit crazy and going off there because it's doing a pattern on that side of the cube this side of the cube that side and that side okay so one direction might be the one that you want so i'm going to click ok and then after a few seconds that would generate and i've created that pattern Okay, so what we've got here is a cube in the top left hand corner again. And on that top surface, I've created a sketch. So I've got a horizontal line and then I've created a sketch that's 135 degrees from that. It doesn't matter about the length of the sketch or the lines, but I've created that on the top surface. Now, if I use that sketch within my sort of pattern tool, I could create something a bit like this. So what we've got is we've got that cuboid again going along there or cube should we say sorry going along that okay linear edge but now okay it's patterning along that angle i've set there so what we're going to do is look at how i did that so i've created okay using extrude this cube on the top we're now going to go into a rectangle pattern we're going to select what we want to pattern which is that same feature the first direction is going to be this edge here and I'm going to drag out how many I want so I might want for example say 10 and I want the total distance to be 85 so 10 within 85 millimeters so that's done normally now if I go like this it's going to go in a sort of a linear 90 degree angle from that original design there so but if I go on to direction and click and just make sure I've got control selected I can now select this here and that arrow has now changed okay angle so that's now my second okay direction and if you watch what happens now I'm going to spin that around okay as I drag that out now okay it is following that angle there and as you can see I can now repeat that pattern and depending on what I want Okay, it's just coming up with a warning to say I might want to change this option down here. But again, I can now change that and start deciding on, right, okay, what I want to do is add more of those until I created the, you know, the desired pattern I would want. You've just got to be careful, for example, so what you've got here is now that pattern's going off. Okay, because I've, I've changed the angles. But what you can do, because I've got suppress selected, I could just come along here, okay, untick these, go on like that, it takes a few seconds, okay, click OK, and I've created that sort of pattern. Now you can see there the corners are joining together, so if I got it wrong, well, I want to change it, that's not what I want, I could go in, okay, I could come up here, and I could change either that spacing there, for example. Okay, or I can change that spacing until I get you know, the desired pattern I want. So it's all about changing these dimensions and working out the spacings that you require okay, to achieve that. And with a little bit of changing those features, if I just delete that, okay, you could then okay, create a pattern like so. So that's how you can change your second okay, path or angle using a sketch. Thanks for watching and if you found this content helpful please click like and subscribe and also check out any other resources and videos created using the links in the description. I'll see you on the next one.